Welcome to Nursing Prep. Push yourself in nursing preparation with smart way. Practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com. Nursing Health Assessment and Pain When evaluating a client's adaptation to pain, which behavior indicates appropriate adaptation? Option A. The client distracts himself during pain episodes. Option B. The client denies the existence of any pain. Option C. The client reports no need for family support. Option D. The client reports pain reduction with decreased activity. Right answer is. Option A. The client distracts himself during pain episodes. Distraction is an appropriate method of reducing pain. Denying the existence of any pain is inappropriate and not indicative of coping. Exclusion of family members and other sources of support represents a maladaptive response. Range of motion exercises and at least mild activity, not decreased activity, can help reduce pain and are important to prevent complications of immobility. In planning pain reduction interventions, which pain theory provides information most useful to nurses? Option A. Specificity theory. Option B. Pattern theory. Option C. Gate control theory. Option D. Central control theory. Right answer is. Option D. Central control theory. No one theory explains all the factors underlying the pain experience. But the central control theory discusses brain opiates with analgesic properties and how their release can be affected by actions initiated by the client and caregivers. The gate control, specificity, and pattern theories do not address pain control to the depth included in the central control theory. Ryan underwent an open reduction and internal fixation of the left hip. One day after the operation, the client is complaining of pain. Which data would cause the nurse to refrain from administering the pain medication and to notify the healthcare provider instead? Option A. Left hip dressing dry and intact. Option B. Blood pressure of 114.78 of a millimeter Hg, pulse rate of 82 beats per minute. Option C. Left leg in functional anatomic position. Option D. Left foot cold to touch. No palpable pedal pulse. Right answer is. Option D. Left foot cold to touch. No palpable pedal pulse. A left foot cold to touch without palpable pedal pulse represents an abnormal finding on neurovascular assessment of the left leg. The client is most likely experiencing some complication from surgery, which requires immediate medical intervention. The nurse should notify the healthcare provider of these findings. A dry and intact hip dressing, blood pressure of 114.78 of a millimeter Hg, pulse rate of 82 beats per minute. Which term would the nurse use to document pain at one site that is perceived in other site? Option A. Referred pain. Option B. Phantom pain. Option C. Intractable pain. Option D. Aftermath of pain. Right answer is. Option A. Referred pain. Referred pain is pain occurring at one site that is perceived in another site. Referred pain follows dermatomy and nerve root patterns. Phantom pain refers to pain in a part of the body that is no longer there, such as in amputation. Intractable pain refers to moderate to severe pain that cannot be relieved by any known treatment. Aftermath of pain, a phase of the pain experience and the most neglected phase, addresses the client's response to the pain experience. Albert who suffered severe burns six months ago is expressing concern about the possible loss of job performance abilities and physical disfigurement. Which intervention is the most appropriate for him? Option A. Referring the client for counseling and occupational therapy. Option B. Staying with the client as much as possible and building trust. Option C. Providing cutaneous stimulation and pharmacologic therapy. Option D. Providing distraction and guided imagery techniques. Right answer is. 
Option A. Referring the client for counseling and occupational therapy. Because it has been six months, the client needs professional help to get on with life and handle the limitations imposed by the current problems. Staying with the client, building trust, and providing method of pain relief, such as cutaneous stimulation, medications, distraction, and guided imagery interventions, would have been more appropriate in earlier stages of post-burn injury, when physical pain was most severe and fewer psychologic factors needed to be addressed. Mrs. Baga Payo who had abdominal surgery three days earlier complains of sharp, throbbing abdominal pain that ranks 8 on a scale of 1, no pain, to 10, worst pain. Which intervention should the nurse implement first? Option A. Assessing the client to rule out possible complications secondary to surgery. Option B. Checking the client's chart to determine when pain medication was last administered. Option C. Explaining to the client that the pain should not be this severe three days postoperatively. Option D. Obtaining an order for a stronger pain medication because the client's pain has increased. Right answer is. Option A. Assessing the client to rule out possible complications secondary to surgery. The nurse immediate action should be assess the client in an attempt to exclude possible complications that may be causing the client's complaints. The healthcare provider ordered the pain medication for routine post-operative pain that is expected after abdominal surgery. Which term refers to the pain that has a slower onset, is diffuse, radiates, and is marked by somatic pain from organs in any body activity? Option A. Acute pain. Option B. Chronic pain. Option C. Superficial pain. Option D. Deep pain. Right answer is. Option D. Deep pain. Deep pain has a slow onset, is diffuse, and radiates, and is marked by somatic pain from organs in any body activity. Acute pain is rapid in onset, usually temporary, less than 6 months and subsides spontaneously. Chronic pain is marked by gradual onset and lengthy duration, more than six months. Superficial pain has abrupt onset with sharp, stinging quality. A 50-year-old widower has arthritis and remains in bed too long because it hurts to get started. Which intervention should the nurse plan? Option A. Telling the client to strictly limit the amount of movement of his inflamed joints. Option B. Teaching the client's family how to transfer the client into a wheelchair. Option C. Teaching the client the proper method for massaging inflamed, sore joints. Option D. Encouraging gentle range of motion exercises after administering aspirin and before rising. Right answer is. Option D. Encouraging gentle range of motion exercises after administering aspirin and before rising. Aspirin raises the pain threshold and, although range of motion exercises hurt, mild exercise can relieve pain on rising. Strict limitation of motion only increases the client's pain. Having others transfer the client into a wheelchair does not increase his feelings of dependency. Massage increases inflammation and should be avoided with this client. Which intervention should the nurse include as a non-pharmacologic pain relief intervention for chronic pain? Option A. Referring the client for hypnosis. Option B. Administering pain medication as prescribed. Option C. Removing all glaring lights and excessive noise. Option D. Using transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. Right answer is. Option D. Using transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. Non-pharmacologic pain relief interventions include cutaneous stimulation, back rubs, biofeedback, acupuncture, transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation, and more. Hypnosis is considered an alternative therapy. Medications are pharmacologic measures. Although removing glaring lights and excessive noise help to reduce or remove noxious stimuli, it is not specific to pain relief. 
a 12-year-old student fall off the stairs, grabs his wrist, and cries, Oh, my wrist. Help. The pain is so sharp, I think I broke it. Based on this data, the pain the student is experiencing is caused by impulses traveling from receptors to the spinal cord along which type of nerve fibers? Option A. Type A delta fibers. Option B. Autonomic nerve fibers. Option C. Type C fibers. Option D. Somatic efferent fibers. Right answer is. Option A. Type A delta fibers. Type A delta fibers conduct impulses at a very rapid rate and are responsible for transmitting acute sharp pain signals from the peripheral nerves to the spinal cord. Only type A delta fibers transmit sharp, piercing pain. Somatic efferent fibers affect the voluntary movement of skeletal muscles and joints. Type C fibers transmit sensory input at a much slower rate and produce a slow, chronic type of pain. The autonomic system regulates involuntary vital functions and organ control such as breathing. Thanks for watching. You can also practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com link in description box. If you have any doubt ask in comment section and you like our video then do like, comment, share. Subscribe our channel for regular updates.